In today's tutorial we're going to look at how to build a number counter and also we're going to link uh, a bar a bar chart to the values this number counter generates to automatically scale the height of the bar and uh, yeah so a number counter is one of the most typically asked questions um, it's very useful if you're preparing a presentation or anything that involves statistics so we're just going to look at how to create this simple animation here so I'm just going to start a new project and I'm going to create a new composition I think I'll work with 720p just fits on my screen a bit easier uh, create a black solid maybe okay so that's um, where we're going to start I'm just going to cre create a text layer and doesn't actually matter what I kind of call this, but I'm just going to create um, a text layer with zero in it, and I'm going to center align it, and just choose a font that you like. Um, it could be anything. I'm going to make it quite big. Okay, so basically, we write the formula in the source text. Uh, here. So if you just alt click that, it opens up our little uh, code window to write, write an expression. And if you just click on the, just move your mouse till it forms these little small arrows, you can actually drag that open. So we've got some more space to work with. Now, um, what we're going to do is we're going to use a linear function using after effects expressions and linear is basically a kind of tween function it kind of um, goes from a starting value to an end value while certain conditions are true or false and I'm just gonna create start by creating a couple of variables so one variable is start time so I'm just gonna call this start time like that I'm just going to call this zero because I want my uh, counter to start um, counting from zero. I'm going to define a variable n time. And this is when we want it to stop counting. So let's say I want I want it to go on for two seconds. I'm just going to put two in there. This is measured in seconds. Um, the begin value, which is like what number do you want it to start counting from? So again, I'm going to go with zero, and then another variable end value. And let's say it's just a simple counter from zero to 100%, so end value 100. So those are the four variables that we're going to use. And then what basically brings all this together is the linear function. So I'm just going to create another variable, just call it yeah t equals, and then linear. And this is like built into After Effects expressions. It's like a preset, basically. And I'm just going to write time. There is actually, a, if you look, check out the help, it actually explains a format which um, you need to write the linear function in. And so this is just the way it is, time. And then we're going to enter our start time. Start time. And then our comma, our end time and comma, uh, the begin value, and then comma, the end value. And these are all the values basically the linear function requires. We're going to close our brackets. And that's basically it. So a very handy little function. And there's uh, different variations of this as well. There's, um, I'm just going to click away. There's um, some ease functions as well. There's uh, ease in, there's ease out. So it's worth checking up. If you go to the help at adobe.com, if you type in linear, it will basically give you a different variations of this function. But for now, this is all we need. And as you can see, it basically works as soon as we click away. And that's it. So um, I'm just going to increase my uh, project length here. I'm going to make it 100 frames, just so I can 
and because we wrote two seconds basically I'm working at 25 frames a second so this should uh, stop animating at 50 frames because 25 times 2 is 50 and as you can see yep oops just drag that background along and yeah so it stops at 50 and it becomes so it starts at 0 and ends at 100 within two seconds or 50 frames yep and it's that simple so the next bit, um, let me just move this out of the way. And I'm just going to create a shape layer. I'm just going to lock these and I'm just going to create a shape. And this is going to be my bar that I'm going to animate. Now, instead of using keyframes and stuff, I'm actually going to directly link the Y height value to this text. And we're going to do that using an expression called parse int, parse integer. So I'm just going to call this bar and I'm just going to open up its properties. Let's have a look. Rectangle one. And as you can see, if you go to rectangle, rectangle path, there is the size right there. So I'm just going to uncheck this. That's the X value. That's the Y height. So, okay. So how do I do this? I'm going to open up my um, text. So I can see the source text option there. I'm going to Alt click size. And then I'm going to get the pick whip. I'm just going to link it to source text. And it throws up an error, which is what we expected. Now, the reason for that is because source text is a text value. It's not an integer. So one way around this is if we ever want to convert a string into an integer, we can just write parse int and then put whatever the text is into brackets. If I click away, as you can see now that's been accepted. And if I move the animation the time slider, it actually animates with the text. It's actually taking these exact values. As you can see, it's kind of quite small, so I can just, after the brackets, I can add a times two, just kind of increase the size slightly. And as you can see, animates with the text. So I don't want the X uh, scale animating, so I'm, where it says temp, because we basically created a variable here, temp, I don't want it to be used for the X, X width. So I'm just gonna type value square bra bracket zero. This basically means like just that value is going to be input inputted by the user. If I click away, now that value is not get, getting touched, which is good. And I can uh, adjust that by myself here. So even if there's an expression on that, I can still uh, kind of play with the X value, but not with the Y value. That's just going to snap back. <clears throat> so yeah. And basically, shape um, objects are quite annoying because if I hit Y and move that anchor to the bottom, it just kind of shapes seem to ignore anchors and they have like more than one anchor. There's an anchor for this path and there's an anchor for that and there's an anchor for the overall object, as you can see there. And uh, I find them difficult to work with. But what we're going to do is we're basically going to, we've got the position value here, right? So we're going to um, uh, Alt Stopwatch Click Position, and then use the Pick Whip to just just grab the Y value here. I'm just going to see what happens, and as as you can see, it's kind of animate animating the position in a diagonal manner. We don't want that the X value. I want untouched again. So here I'm just going to write value zero square bracket zero click away let's see what happens it's animating downwards so one way around that is to um, multiply by negative one so in here where it says temp I'm gonna add multiply negative one and that usually mathematically that kind of flips things around so yep now it's animating up so we're almost there and as you can see it's kind of traveling along the Y position upwards and this is basically because of that anchor problem I just mentioned so what we can do is we can um, 
divide this by two. Assuming the anchor is right in the center, if I divide this by two, that should keep it in place. Because it, if you think about it, it's basically offsetting it along the Y position as much as it is scaling up, which makes it kind of stand still. So that's cool. That's exactly what we wanted. I'll just move that down. And uh, yeah, there you go. And uh, we can maybe exaggerate the Y size here, multiply that by six. That's maybe too much, four. So yeah, there you go. And it's just automatically animated by these values here. And uh, you can make this look nice however you want. So uh, black solid, I can add a ramp. And then uh, I can add kind of a drop shadow onto these values, make them pop out a bit more. And um, yeah, if you want to add a percentage sign, you can just put that in kind of separately beside it. Right click, layer style, should be able to copy layer style. Yeah, just edit, copy, edit, paste. There we go. And uh, I'll just show you how to add a gradient onto this just very quickly. So we want to go to the rectangle layer here and then click add gradient fill. That adds like a gradient fill. We open up the values. Now we just want to move the start point and end point, the Y values. And as you can see, it's quite hard to see, but there's this um, actual uh, line tool that we can use, line manipulator. It's quite hard to kind of see initially, so just kind of tweak the Y value slightly till it pops out. And then if you click on um, edit gradient here, you can just change those values around. So white, I'm just going to have a red and then the dark value, I'm just going to have like a dark red. Click away. And that's basically it. So um, I hope that was useful and uh, thanks for watching.